Hi, I'm here to talk to you about ADHD. Today, we're going to be going through uh, basic info. We're gonna be talking about executive skills and executive functioning and how that relates to ADHD. We'll also talk about identification and interventions. So ADHD is a developmental disorder. It's neurological. Uh, it has to do with the brain's self-management system. So what self-management is are things that we do to ourselves over time to help us reach goals. Individuals with ADHD have impairments with this. Also, I'd like you to know it's all ADHD. Uh, sometimes when I'm talking to parents, they'll say, no, uh, my child has ADD, uh, ADHD, ADD, it's all the same thing. Technically, uh, the DSM-5, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, uh, has it currently labeled as ADHD, and students can then be defined as either inattentive type or hyperactive type or combined type. Also, um, I said that it was a neurological difference. There are actual studies of uh, brains of children with ADHD that show these neurological differences. Uh, so without spending too much time on the science, I just thought it was important for you to gain a little bit of understanding so you could understand why children present with these symptoms and what's going on in their brain. So uh, up here are images of brains taken uh, starting at age seven and then going all the way to age 13. On the top are the brains of students with ADHD. On the bottom are brains of students without ADHD. So you can see for the students without ADHD, you have this, it's highlighted in purple. You have a lot of activation going on in this front part of the brain. That's where all of those executive skills happen. That's where all the self-management happens. The back of the brain is more about uh, knowledge and what you know. The front of your brain has to do with your performance. Do you do what you know? And so in ADHD, they found that students had lower activity in that front part of their brain where we have things like initiating tasks, working towards goal, motivation, um, emotion management, those type of things develop later in students with ADHD. And as you can see from here, uh, students begin to catch up on these skills. Uh, some of them, uh, it will be less noticeable, but they generally do continue into adulthood. All right, so I was talking about self-regulation. Uh, here are kind of five basic things that have to do with self-regulation and how we looked at those brain scans, how students with ADHD, their brains might develop at a later time, at a delay in those areas as opposed to kids without ADHD. So the first thing that you notice right away um, is inhibition. Can they stop? Do they keep going? Then the next thing is mental imagery. Students with ADHD can't make mental pictures very well. They have a problem with that internal part of their brain with the visualization. So that means that they can't um, think about uh, things that happened before as well, or thinking about things that will happen in the future. And we'll talk a lot about um, how ADHD is sometimes called time blindness, and that's kind of part of the reason where that comes from, is that they have a hard time visualizing what the future will be like. So then, um, at about age five, another delay kind of shows up, and that's that they can't talk to themselves. So uh, for people who do second step, that's self-talk. Uh, it starts external. If you have children, you know, like very young children, all of the chatter that they're doing 
it's on the outside. They don't have any of that internal dialogue. As you grow, that dialogue that's external becomes internal. And that kind of becomes that tiny teacher that sits inside your brain and is telling you, okay, the teacher told me that we're gonna work on this writing assignment. So first I need to make sure that I get a pencil. All of that internal dialogue is not going on, or it's delayed. And then next is emotion regulation. And a lot of times with um, thinking about the future, they can't picture their future emotion. And that's where the motivation problems come in. They can't picture that future emotion. And so that motivation is difficult for them. Also, again, which kind of goes with the inhibition, if they're feeling a very strong emotion, uh, they're not as flexible, so they don't have that flexibility. Uh, and then finally, later on in uh, later childhood, uh, the planning and problem solving, really those deficits show up. Okay, so I talked about the how far people can see into the future. So uh, on here, uh, you can see two years old, they can't really see into the future at all. It's all about the now. But then by about three to five years, they can start seeing five to 20 minutes into the future. And then first grade, several hours. So then think about your student with ADHD who may be a couple years delayed in this. I think some research says about 30% delay is kind of what they see. So maybe about two years Think about that first grade student who is maybe only seeing about five minutes into the future, whereas the rest of his peers can now see several hours into the future. And we'll talk about why that's so important a little bit later. Okay, here's another chart just uh, highlighting executive functions and uh, impairments in ADHD students. So you can see it has to do with organization, focusing, uh, regulating, managing emotions. Uh, working memory is also very delayed. Uh, they might have a lot of knowledge, but they can't access that knowledge. It's the knowledge is there, the performance isn't there. As far as identification, uh, some things you probably observe in your classroom, if there are students that you're concerned about, and some of you have shared those with me, I've come in and have done on-task uh, evaluations, also uh, rating scales. Uh, the Vanderbilt is what most pediatricians use, and so maybe those have come to you uh, at a certain time and you've had to fill those out for the pediatrician. I also have those in my office uh, and then we can gather that data together and put that in a report and sometimes then uh, parents can then take that to their pediatrician and so they can get the pediatrician to see what they think uh, because it's important uh, that they know what's going on at school because sometimes when parents come in you know they're not at school with their student like you are all day. And so they might not know what their student looks like at school. So sometimes reports like that and rating scales um, oftentimes are very important. Uh, also have done some BASC threes, which include some other, looking at other disorders as well as attention concerns uh, because ADHD is also uh, comorbid with other disorders. So um, students with ADHD may are more likely to suffer from things like um, anxiety or uh, depression or things like that. So it can kind of look at different things. Uh, so primarily a pediatrician is kind of the way to go for identification and then we can help provide that in, uh, information to pediatricians but that's usually where the um, identification happens. So then interventions. Uh, I mentioned going to the pediatrician. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time 
uh, on medication. I think that's the next slide. Uh, also, psychotherapy, behavior modification therapy, social skills training, support groups, and school-based in interventions are all interventions that are used to help students with ADHD. Uh, if you listen to some experts and uh, it makes sense thinking about uh, what we've already talked about with uh, psychotherapy, and you've probably seen this in your classroom, I know I've seen it in my office, I've gone over um, steps to calm down or different behavior skills and the student in my office, they can tell me everything that they know, but then they go out uh, into the classroom or out on the playground or out uh, in the lunchroom and then they are not doing those things that they know. It's part of the performance deficit. Um, also, uh, I'll talk more about behavior modification therapy. Uh, that's more going in, looking at the behaviors in the environment, and then coming up with interventions in that environment to help that student. Uh, medication, um, most of the research shows that it's very effective. I said I wouldn't talk about it very much because it's not something that we have uh, any control over, uh, but uh, studies have shown that it is effective in reducing symptoms for about 70% of students. Uh, and I just said reducing symptoms because for most, there are still some symptoms that persist or they might persist at a lower level. Okay, so as I said, if a student has ADHD, some of these executive skills will be impaired. Uh, response inhibition, being able to stop themselves, uh, sustained attention, staying focused for a very long time, working memory, how much information they're able to store in their head at one time. Time management, I talked about that time blindness. They don't have that vision of how time goes. They don't have, they don't feel that sweep of time like other people. Uh, task initiation, getting started on a task, uh, and also that goal-directed persistence. They don't have that continued internal motivation because they can't picture that future emotion that is that motivation. So, that's where the intervention should be targeted. Since they don't have those internal things, we have to put them externally in their environment for them. So one of the things that you can do is make mental information physical. This it looks like to-do lists, signs, cues, charts, examples of a finished project. Uh, students with ADHD have, don't have that future picture of what something should look like. So here's an example. Uh, this is from Sarah Ward. Uh, she uses the get ready, do, done. I went to see her a couple years ago. She's really good. She's coming back in the spring um, through Hilia. So if you can see her, she is uh, an expert on executive skills. Uh, so what she says is that we, for students, you always want to begin with the end. So here's an example of the done. Uh, you want the student to know what it will look like when they're done because they don't have that future picture on their own. So we're gonna give them that external support to help them know what it looks like when they're done. And if you see down here, it also says, when I'm done, I will feel. We're gonna have them put that emotion here so that it's a reminder that when I get this done, this is what it will look like. This is how I'll feel. And that will help with that motivation. Then we go to the get ready. And it says use my smarts on here. That's a tool that just helps them remember, okay, when I'm getting started, I need to look at strategies, materials. Uh, do I need any art supplies? Do I need resources? What kind of technologies? So they're gonna put all of those things that they need here to get started. And then you'll see what they need to do to get it done. And there's also a slot here for time because like I said, they don't feel that sweep of time. So you have to ask them, okay, how long is this task gonna take? 
five minutes. Okay, let's go to the next one. How long is that gonna take? And then so on and so on. Uh, here's an example of the smarts filled out. Like, what do you need? I need a handout. Um, all right, that's in my binder. I'll need my binder and I'll need my book. Uh, and I'll also need my scissors and crayons for this activity. Um, and then who can I reach out to? And then what technologies will I need? Okay, since they don't feel that sweep of time, they don't have that time management, you have to make time real for them. You have to put that time external to them because they're not feeling it inside. So the 3030 app is awesome. I have a picture of that later. Uh, also timers, watches, self monitoring devices, the motivator. I was going to bring that in to show you, but it is in the classroom right now being used with a student. Uh, so what that is, it's just, it kind of looks like a little pager and you can set it to vibrate at different times. And then it's to help the student self monitor. Am I staying focused? Uh, am I on task? It's that reminder to them because they don't have that internal reminder in their brain. Uh, also, agendas, planners, um, prompts, reminders, schedules, all of these external things these students need to be successful. Here's a picture of what the 3030 app does. This shows you about the sweep of time so they know how long they've been working on something. Here are the tasks that you put on here. Uh, and then you can edit the colors, the amount of time, if you think it's gonna take you longer. Uh, so a great app. And the great thing is, uh, unlike other presenters, I'm here. So if you ever want me to come in the classroom and show you any of these things, uh, I'm happy to do that. Small quotas, you have to break things up into chunks because they're not gonna be able to do that on their own. So thinking long-term book reports or projects where they have multiple parts that go on over an extended amount of time, that's a very difficult thing for a student with ADHD to do. So they would need external supports to do that. Um, also, we talked about motivation already. Um, you have to make that motivation external. They struggle with time, so extended consequences are very difficult for them. Um, also, the consequences need to be in the now because they don't have that same, um, that same sense of that time. Okay, the next thing I wanted to show you, uh, this is Russ Barkley. Uh, I think he is the ADHD guru. He recently retired, like last year. So now all of his resources, his presentations, his lectures are all out there that he donated for anybody to use. Uh, this is him talking about accommodations for students with ADHD. Okay. Also, um, help aids with working memory. So they struggle with holding that information in their brain. So um, giving them aids such as counters, marbles, calculators, anything that can help take that load off of that working memory. Uh, also, uh, future pictures. Um, I have some examples of those as well. Um, so instead of you know asking your student, okay, is your bag packed? Is it ready to go? Here you have this luggage tag that's on here and it has, okay, here's my equipment. Here's a picture of it. It's a future picture. It's the, the done pile. It's what it looks like when it's completed that they left. So we're giving them that external tool to help. Uh, so here's hair care, uh, towel, you know, there, it looks like they're going to swim practice. Okay, for older students, you can take pictures of it and put it on their phone so they know this is what it looks like when it's done. It gives them that future picture that they don't have. All right, uh, also here they place this by a door. It's kind of a, a stop signal that says, what will you look like when you leave? 
it's that external tool to help them with that visualization. Okay, also uh, help keep their tank full. So students with ADHD, their tank gets depleted and it gets depleted quickly. So here are some things to keep their tank full. Um, positive self-talk, praise, uh, 10 minutes of work and then a break, relaxation, meditation has been shown to be effective for these students, um, helping them to visualize the future. All of those things help them to refuel their tank. Okay, also I just have uh, some references that I used, um, presentations that I've seen, lectures, um, books that I have read that I think are good. Also, um, some different resources that you can use. Um, after this, there is a Google form. If you have any questions or you'd like to share stories that you've had success with your students, um, you can post them there. Uh, and then also just mark that you've completed this course. So thank you so much.